Okay, so we are working on this selection all the way around. We used the magic wand. It helped us find little bits of debris, right? Like this little line that's here. So I'm just using my lasso tool, holding down shift to add all these little bits of debris into what my final erase will get rid of. And these are, these could be like really low opacity little fragments of pixels. But if we were to print a t-shirt of it or print a sticker or put this as a sticker on top of our landscape, which will be assignment three, they would be little traces of pixels that were still there. And a lot of these are because of the quick selection tool, which always leaves a little bit of a, a trace edge. Could be from uh, the magic wand tool and just things we, we missed. But to get the best possible project for this creature collage, you don't want any unwanted pixels outside of the creature itself. And so we're doing the kind of final edge check here. So we're getting a lot of practice at these selections. And I'm still feathering at, at two pixels. and just cutting out. Now what's a fast way to get rid of all these tiny things? It would be to use select and mask and just grow the selection, but that would soften everything. So where the selection was nice and clean, it would also bite away from that, and I don't want that. But if my textures were softer textures, like individual um, tufts of hair, or edges of wings and feathers that are translucent at the tip anyway, then that might be a good way to clean up the surrounding edges. And I know I've done it in demos in the past. It's also good to kind of see everything at full resolution one last time. And while it is on a combined layer, I've just cut it all out, I hit delete. I hit that again, and just to check, I can make a new layer and I can say edit fill now that I've selected all the empty space and I can fill it with black. And I shouldn't see any little holes. Oh, there's some, some stuff. So let me make sure. Yeah, I thought I got all that. I'm sure I got all that. Let me go back in my history. Weird. So right before I deleted, let's see. Yeah, I got all of it, except these ones. So you want to make sure they're gone. I might hit delete a few times now because I'm feathering a few pixels. Okay, I don't see any, any lingering. So let's, this is the most obvious, these lines here. Yeah, so they're, they're gone. Excellent. So now if I take that selection, all the empty space again, and do a new layer, this is just optional to check your work, and then fill it with black, but I just, gave a great example of why you want to do that. It will show you any edges that aren't intended. Come on. Good. And that looks pretty darn clean. So I'm happy. And I know it will go cleanly onto my environment. The other thing I can do is maybe while the black is is on, I, I can kind of check the overall levels of my creature, right? So sometimes with gray, it can look like it's all a little washed out, but on black, it will look pretty bright. And then on white, I select it again, and then I fill it with white. 
it will look a little too dark. So these three different backgrounds really affect your final color adjustments and your final levels adjustments. So here, while it's looking kind of dark, I might do some overall dodging and burning. I might burn the midtones here. And with the black turned on, I might decide that certain things need to be brightened. And I might to dodge them, maybe just the highlights slightly, that uh, makes it too bright, maybe up here, up here, all these things that catch the light, so you can make your, your final adjustments. And then ultimately, we're going to turn that background off. So we just see it like this. Even though it's not a great way to see your creature, this is how you want to save it. Because we just want the creature isolated as its own cutout, head to toe. So now I'm going to save it as my PSD. This is my assignment two, as kind of clean as I could get it in the time allotted. And then I'm going to say file save as, so that I can put it up onto the photo bucket. I have to save it as an online format. So I'm gonna to go to the desktop, Save it as a PNG. Make sure you save it with your name and a description with no background turned on, right? The PNG will merge all these layers into one layer, but it will also support the transparency around it. So it'll be a nice shaped file so that when you open it in something like preview, it's a big file. Let's see. There we go. It will have a gray background behind it instead of white or instead of black or instead of middle gray. And you shouldn't see any debris around it. Nice and clean. Okay. So I've got my PNG. That's my finished assignment. Now I need my sketch. So I'm going to turn on my sketch layer. Right, And just for fun, to show what influenced it, I'm going to composite in these little Pokemon that inspired it. Tuck them into the corners here. And now I'm going to save that as a JPEG to the desktop as my sketch. as long as it as a JPEG because we want the white space and definitely less than five megabytes. Now your PNGs are going to be probably larger than five megabytes. Oh, didn't want to open it. I can do get info and see. Yeah, so your PNG might be as large as mine, which is 20 megabytes. But that is okay as long as it's a good high-res PNG. That's a nice backup of the piece because we need it for assignment. We need that PNG for assignment three. Okay, now to submit. I've saved them to my desktop, the sketch and the PNG creature. They are titled with my name. So I am ready to go to the class photo bucket to navigate to the right folder. which is under Digital Art 1, and under Digital 1 Assignments, and under Assignment 2, Collage Creature, 
and you're going to put it just right into this folder, to the collage creature folder, your sketch, and then your final composite. And I'm going to put mine into instructor demonstrations. And then the way we will name them, like we always do this semester, with we're going to title them with SP19, a space, then your first name, then a space, and then the number. So the sketch will be number one, and your, your PNG composite will be number two, so that your sketch will show up first before your finished work. All right, let's see. And remember that SP19, that stands for Spring 2019, so it keeps all of our semester stuff together. And if you accidentally put it into past student examples or something, that makes it easy to find. Remember to put the spaces between SP19, your first name, and the number one. And then your final composite is number two. And when we do our presentation critiques of them, we're going to go into the slideshow because the black background of the slideshow will really show us if you saved it as a PNG clearly and if you have debris still stuck around it. So let's see the slideshow. There's my sketch. And then here is the cutout PNG. Yeah. You do. Yep. So for online file formats, the one we use for raster images, we use JPEG when we want it all to be filled in, a full rectangle to be filled in. And we use PNG when we want transparency, when we want to cut out. All right. That is it. I look forward to seeing them.